What's up everyone? Sam here from bitebybite.com and in this video I'm going to show you five ways to use your holiday and your time off as productively as possible. And if you want tons more videos like this on productivity and how to develop as a software engineer, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. We're releasing new videos every week. So this year is an interesting year because the way that the holidays are lining up with the weekly calendar, we actually have probably more days off this year than we do any other year. And that makes it even more important that we use that time that we have off as effectively as possible. So that's what I want to show you in this video. I want to show you five different ways that you can use that time effectively. And the first way that you can really use your time off effectively that might be a little surprising is to take time to rest. If you watch my burnout video recently, this may not come as a shock to you, but this year has been nuts, <laughs> right? There has been a lot going on this year and the levels of stress and the levels of just fatigue that have built up this year can be really, really high for a lot of people. And so one of the most productive things you can do counterintuitively is to just take time to rest, relax and recover so that you can go into the next year, so that you can go into 2021 feeling fresh, feeling ready to go, and not having all that stress weighing on you. This is something that I would highly encourage you, even if you're just feeling a little bit, even if you're just feeling a little bit tired from work, even if you're just feeling a little bit of just like, ah, you know, I'd love to have a little time off, don't feel like you have to fill every moment of your holiday with like productive time, right? Don't feel like you have to spend all the time learning new things, doing basically the other things that I'm going to share with you in this video. Take some time to read a book. Take some time to do something that you enjoy, do something fun. I really like just going outside and going for a walk. Even if it's cold, just like bundle up if it's a nice day. Really great way to just kind of clear your mind. Find ways that you can rest, that you can relax, and so that you will be recovered come the new year when you have to go back to work. You don't want to be dreading that first day back. You want to be feeling fresh and excited to get back into things. Now, thing number two, and for all the rest of these, this is really important. You should not do any of these until you've done step number one, right? Until you've adequately rested, don't worry about doing any of these other things. But once you feel rested, here are going to be some things that you can do to use that time to actually make a lot of progress forward and to progress in various areas of your life and career. And so strategy number two is to learn a new language or framework. And now I know you might be thinking like, hey, this is really not a lot of time. How am I going to learn all this in any meaningful way during the like five days off or the three days off or however much time I have? And the reason why I would really encourage you to do this during that time is for that exact reason. There's a law called Parkinson's law, which basically says that uh, the amount of work that you have to do will expand to the amount of time that you allot for that work. And what that means is a simple example of that is like if you've ever had a paper that was due the next morning or, uh, you know, had to study for a test, you get it done when you, even if you don't feel like you have enough time, like you'll procrastinate for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, but then you'll write that whole paper the night before it's due. And so the same is true when we are learning languages or learning frameworks. I find that so often people get so like in the weeds about it. They get really uh, it takes them so long to learn something because they just get really hung up on like specific things. But if you limit the time that you have, if you limit the time that you allow yourself, then you are really going to force yourself to, you know, focus on the main thing. So this is a really great time to say, okay, let me focus on the fundamentals and focus on applying those fundamentals. And one of the best ways to actually apply those fundamentals is my strategy number three here, which is to build a side project. Now, I know building side projects is popular for a lot of reasons, right? It can be a good thing for your resume. It can be a good way to learn new skills. But what I really want you to think about here is how can I build a side project that's going to allow me to double down on a specific skill that I want to learn? How can I build a side project that like, let's say you are preparing for your system design interview and you want to learn how to design APIs. What is a side project that you could do that would specifically focus on designing APIs. Let's say maybe you wanted to learn how to use message brokers. What is a side project that you could do that would specifically focus on doing cool things with message brokers? One of the things, one of the biggest mistakes that people make with side projects is they think it has to be something that people are going to use or that's going to be really valuable in some external sense. And I would strongly argue against doing that. 
There's so much to really get people to use your project. You're going to need to do marketing. You're need, going to need to do the business side. And unless you want to get into business, that's a big thing that's like going to be a burden on your ability to actually work on the side project. So one of the best ways to do this is find something that you can create a clone of. I love this strategy because if you create a clone of Facebook or you create a clone of Instagram or you create a clone of YouTube, all the project management and all the like kind of feature design has already been done for you. So you can focus on how do I apply the technological skills? How do I apply my expertise? And how do I learn how to build this thing rather than how do I decide what to build in the first place? Now, if you're just feeling like really burnt out from coding or you really wanna just kind of take a change of pace during your time off, you can still take time to learn something that is non-technical. There's definitely no requirement that you learn something technical. And so this is strategy number four is to learn something non-technical. And one of the great ways to think about like, to think about this is, is there something that you've always wanted to learn, right? This is another example where you can apply Parkinson's law and it's like, how could I get started on this thing? I'm not necessarily gonna learn everything I need to know about whatever it is, but I can get started on this process. And there's a great mental framework that Tim Ferriss talks about, which is thinking about what is the lead domino? What is the first thing that I could do that would make everything else I need to do to learn this thing easier or obsolete? Or alternatively, what is the first thing that I could learn that would make learning other things easier? I actually love, um, you know, he, he has a book called The 4-Hour Chef, which is arguably about cooking, but it's more about this idea of metal learning, about like learning how to learn. And that's a really interesting example of if you started with that, like let's say you wanted to learn something new. If you started with how do I learn how to learn, it's kind of that sharpening the ax, right? It's taking time to learn how to learn so that everything else you're doing is going to be easier. Another example of something that I did was I learned how to, I spent time practicing speed reading. Because I was like, okay, well, if I can read faster, then it's going to make it easier for me to learn other things. So these are a couple ways to think about like, what are some things I could learn? What are some things that would be valuable to me in some way as I'm going forward uh, into the new year? here? And then finally, thing number five that I would recommend doing over the holidays is taking time to set your goals for the new year, right? Take time to actually sit down and think, what is it that I want to accomplish? Think about where, it, what have you accomplished in the last year and where do you want to go in this coming year? A lot of times we, kind of write this off as something where it's like, oh, I know what I want to do. But it can be really, really helpful to actually sit down and get explicit about this. Next week, I'm going to be sharing a video on here. So definitely keep an eye out for that. But I'm going to be sharing a video that shares like my new goal setting process. So I've actually changed the way that I think about setting goals. I'm going to share with you why I changed the way that I set goals and how to think about it differently. So keep an eye out for that video. But at a bare minimum, just sit down for a little bit and think, what do I want to accomplish in this new year? What would make this year feel like it was a success? And so with that, that's all I got for you. Again, highly recommend one, taking time to rest, taking one to, time to get that relaxation. Two, learn a new language or a framework. Three, building a side project and applying that new skill that you're learning. Four, maybe learn something non-technical. And five, setting your goals for the next year. And so with that, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed this video, please do go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.